the Grand Library of Candlekeep. A treasure trove of knowledge awaits us just across the way. <sighs> what of you, huh? And to think I persuaded the innkeeper to let us stay for one song. I've heard that to enter, one must provide knowledge that doesn't exist in the library. Uh huh. But I have the perfect solution. We shall write our book, a tome of our adventures and wisdom, so that future generation may marvel at our tales. But, Lovett, what if no one cares about our stories? <laughs> Nonsense! With my wit and your wisdom, we are unstoppable. Now, picture this. <clears throat> a bard so charming, even dragons are left speechless. Yes, truly charming. <laughs> and a druid, so in tune with nature, they once convinced the tree to dance. Um, that never happened. Ah, oh, Siona, you always ruin my best bardic tales. But worry not. In the realm of storytelling, every tree has danced at least once. Even if only in the bard's imagination. <laughs> okay then. So where do we start? From the beginning, of course. So, um, do you have any siblings? Hmm. Well, I do have the trees, I guess. And the dryads, of course. What about you? Yes, um, sister, Merethil. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of B&D Podcast. Hello. <laughs> we are your uh, host, Zephy, and Val. <laughs> and today, what are, exactly are we doing here, Val? Can you elaborate? So basically, yeah. Um, the reason that we're here today is that because we decided to start this podcast mostly for us, uh, because we thought that it's a shame to just keep our favorite D D characters forgotten in time and hidden in our dusty minds. So, unfortunately, sometimes things don't go as planned. Um. So both of our characters were left on a cliffhanger with no future hope of coming back to them ever. And But I think that's a story for a different episode. <laughs> a big episode. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be longer. <laughs> so we just thought, why can't we just bring them back to life? And send them on an adventure together. Yeah, that would be cool. And uh, today we're going to present to you our characters' backstories because you're going to see, uh, you're going to hear actually, uh, a lot from them and their adventures through little scripts we have made and dive into what happened in two completely different campaigns run by two different but wonderful DMs that they were part of, that we were part of. That sounds good, I guess. Does it? <laughs> uh, well, it is good. No, mm -hmm. it's really good. And I hope uh, you all like it too. You all like them as we like them because we trust us. We have poured our souls and hearts mm -hmm. into these two characters. And uh, we resonate a lot uh, with them. And, uh, you know, um, I don't know. I, I'm getting emotional here. Come on. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying not to because uh, it's just the start. So we need to wait until at least 10 minutes in to cry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, later, after the recording. The cry will come <laughs> after the recording. <laughs> so, uh, for the beginning... I would like to make some questions to you, Val, if you're okay with that. Okay. Uh, that has to do with Siona, mm -hmm. which is the first uh, adventure of this limited party, but still cool. Siona, so can you tell us um, about her upbringing? Yeah, so basically Siona was a druid, um, Circle of the Forest, 
And her race was a homebrew race um, that we chose uh, Health Dryad. Um, but firstly, I want to talk about her name because yeah. uh, there's a lot of controversy about her name. <laughs> um, no, I've heard. Since <laughs> you moved to Scotland. It's well, kind of... yeah, I did somehow. <laughs> they enlightened you somehow. <laughs> so basically, back in 2017, when I chose her name, I didn't know a single thing about Gaelic or Gaelic. So there are two different types. It's the Irish one and the Scottish one. So I was just a, really obsessed with Celtic mythology. And I found the Irish word, um, the Irish Gaelic word for fox. So I just decided to go with that for my character. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I was living in Greece back then. So even if I tried to, I couldn't learn how to pronounce the word correctly. So I just decided to just come up with my own pronunciation of it and it just I got stuck with it <laughs> well <laughs> yeah and we don't change it now it's too late no we're not gonna change it too late too late to apologize yeah I do like the sound of it even if it's so m mispronounced so it's just gonna stay Siona I don't care <laughs> um <laughs> so when it comes to her backstory please don't judge me I was young that was six years ago um, so her father, Cenarius, was the arch druid of the high forest of Farron, and her mother was a dryad named Toriel. <clears throat> Copyrights. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a child born from a dryad and the arch druid of her circle was a blessing from the goddess Myliki, the forest queen. Um, so this only happens once a century, and the child would be destined to do greater good and become the new keeper of the high forest. But obviously has to be dramatic, right? So Ser seriously now? Of course. Where's so the unfortunately <laughs> the night of her birth, worshippers of the goddess Talona, the lady of poison, burnt her mother's tree to ashes and attacked the whole circle. And her father fought bravely, but died in the process. So the dryads managed to just flee with the newborn child, Siona. Oh, a burning tree, huh? That <laughs> reminds me. <laughs> go so... back. Let's go back to black. <laughs> <laughs> so with all these tragic events surrounding your backstory, I guess I can say for sure that they were incredibly challenging. So what did you decide to do after all these events? So Siona decided basically to live in seclusion after what happened and trained herself to become the best healer and herbalist. You got lots of heals from her, if I remember correctly. Thank you. Thank you. you saved our souls. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> I don't know if it's okay to say other words, so I'll, I'll just say souls. <laughs> Yeah, just stick to that. And I just remember Thorn Whip as well. It was important. It was very important. A very important spell, actually. And I actually remember Bark Skin. And we have a we had a conversation yesterday or a day before. I don't know. For for some reason, this spell reminds me of Siona so much. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna cry, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, please. But you know, it it was a fun fact, okay? Let's keep going. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> basically, she didn't pay that much. Like, she, she didn't go visit her circle and the rest of the dryads. She was trying to avoid getting seen with them because of Talona's worshippers. They were still trying to hunt down <clears throat> the circle. But all these years. They somehow managed to escape every time, um, thanks to Mayaliki's blessing. Mm -hmm. And she was really happy and content with her quiet and eventful life. But obviously, fate, as you know, is a strange thing. And a day came that she ended up bumping into a group of adventurers. It's okay to have an uneventful life till something happens and boom. Boom. You're not okay <laughs> to have an uneventful life. Fireball. <laughs> Fireball. <laughs> Spell plague. Oh. Spoilers. <laughs> oh, no. So 
you meet a group of adventurers later mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they seem to have a profound impact on your life and my question is how did you come to trust them and especially considering your initial fear of people and what about your relationship with them how did this relationship change you as a person well it definitely changed me as a person yeah. <laughs> I don't know about Siona, but it changed me, definitely. <laughs> Both of you, actually. Yeah. We're growing with her. We're together. Through the game. So basically, I think all her life, she was trying to hide from people. And she was terrified of them. Um, But now she was actually speaking to them. She couldn't trust anyone after what they've done to her and her mom and her dad, blah, blah, blah. Tragic backstory. Um, but somehow she did find a way to trust again. And these people became her new circle in a way, her new family, and she trusted them with her life. She found love and she found friendship and companionship and sorrow and misery. Oh, and the all the good nice stuff. Things. Yeah. And all the people that she met, Echo and May and Far, became so important to her, specifically May. Um, became her best friend and guided her towards the light. And I always like to describe it as if she was the brightest light in the darkest of her times. Now who's going to cry? Don't cry. I happen to play May for those <laughs> who don't know what is going on right now and why are we getting emotional without an explanation. So yeah, I have lived Siona firsthand. Hopefully, we're going to meet May as well at some point. Yeah, maybe. She was a pretty cool monk. She was a great monk. <laughs> she was wise sometimes. Sometimes. And she was giving tough love many times, <laughs> actually. But she was cool. She was cool and hot headed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, in our campaign, um, Mistra was gone, and the spell plague took away everything from Siona. The whole forest was burned. She became a half blighted tree because of that. So I don't know if you know that or if people know that, but if you burn the tree of a dryad, she actually goes insane and dies. But obviously, because Siona was only a half dryad, she survived somehow. Yeah. Um, so she managed to cast. Plant growth for 24 hours straight with the last hazelnut she had left from her old tree. But obviously the newborn tree that she created was still too weak and small to heal her completely. So it just completely changed her physically, emotionally, mentally. She was empty. She was craving to feel again. It was so hard for everyone, I think at the time um dealing with all this because so we were trying to find a cure basically but unfortunately she had to say goodbye to her friends and life seemed like it had no meaning anymore and i think that's a story for a different episode and i'm gonna stop now please because i'm gonna cry <laughs> <clears throat> okay so I, I come in and i say um but every end has a new beginning mm-hmm and actually, you never know where the real end exists because something happened later. Well, I hope it's canon. <laughs> what happened later? It is. It is. It is. We. It is. <laughs> <laughs> we have wonderful DMs, and they allow us. So and they give us permission. Is. Yeah, we have permission. Uh, so, the symbolism of finding peace under the shadow of your hazel tree is the least I can say powerful. And how does this symbolism shape your perspective on life? Especially since you endured love and loss, but that didn't stop you. That's a really good question, <laughs> Zephy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I make people cry sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. I do think that even though she was trying to hide from people, she always wanted to be seen in a way. And she wanted to be loved and appreciated. And when this actually happened, she felt so grateful and warm. But then everything was taken away from her again, obviously, edgelord. Um, 
So it's just so strange sometimes how our characters depict our own selves in the way and the way that we feel about life at the time, maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> so after all that she endured, life for her meant only to just find peace. So what she needed was just one last goodbye, one last night with her friends, and then she would just become one with her tree and be at peace. But obviously, May and Echo had other plans for her. And they wanted to fix what was broken. So Echo spent years and years training um, Dunamansi, a powerful school of magic, to make this possible. So they were going to go back in time and try to change everything. It would save Mistra, prevent the spell plague, and also save her tree as well. Um, They found people to help them to do that. But obviously, things never go as planned. The world was saved. The spell plague never happened. Siona was healthy and alive. But as Fern says, time is a weird soup. <laughs> time is a weird soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And May was trapped somewhere in space and time. Echo was left somewhere swimming in a sea of dreams. Siona was back and she had both the bad and the good memory somehow. And that's exactly where we have left the story. And that's how she met Lovett. Yeah. Lovett, who is searching for something similar, actually. They are looking for the same magic that could mm -hmm. help them to return to their own timelines, planes, or bring their loved ones back to their original timeline and I don't know. I don't know all this weird stuff. <laughs> and uh, yes, Lavette comes in the picture. And I just want to know, first of all, what's her class and her race? So, Lavette actually is a um, female bard, a half elf actually bard. And uh, she comes from a homebrew uh, universe that a friend of mine uh, DM'd greatly. I have to say that. And she comes from actually a background, a fun fact. Loved was first created uh, in Final Fantasy XIV online. Mm -hmm. uh, she was, uh, I made her as a, a human archer bard. And it was so cool. I loved it. And I loved the story. And I love Final Fantasy, actually. So I was like to my uh, friend, you know, I want to create her in our d, &D. Can I? But she's kind of ar an archer and a bard. And how can we uh, sing those two? Uh, can I have a fighter and multi-class as a bard? I don't know how we can work this out. And he told me, you know, we can go uh, with the College of the Swords, but it was, it is kind of melee friendly, uh, the subclass. And I wanted to play with a longbow, which would be also a lyre, uh, so she could use for inspirations, etc. So we changed it a bit, and uh, we made it more ranged friendly to Lovette and it was great not big changes just ranged friendly mm -hmm. so Lovette comes from um, a place called Gridania whoever played Final Fantasy XIV know where is Gridania and um, you know it was a, a place uh, inside the forest uh, when she was a baby actually her parents divorced and uh, her father took her older sister Merethil away with him so they abandoned them. Her mother stayed with Lovette because she was a baby, she needed her mother and she grew with her. But later on in her life something happened actually a lord from another uh, realm took over Gridania and they would enslave uh, the bards because Gridania was a place full of bards and full of arts and they were peaceful people. They were just creating and nothing else. 
So this man came, Lovet didn't even know his name, enslaved them and made them to work and create art for him so he could sell it to other people so he could be richer and richer. And no one opposed because they were bards and they weren't fighters. They didn't know how to fight. They just knew how to create and nothing more. And Lovette was kind of pissed with this behavior growing up. So when she was um, 18, 19 years old, she was like, you know, I'm sick of all this. I just, I have to go. I have to leave. I have to, to be more powerful. I have to show them that we can do this. We can fight. We can take our freedom back. And if all they need is a hero, maybe I can become one. That's actually so, so inspiring. Yeah. She she's a bard. <laughs> <laughs> but she doesn't even know th- know this that it is very inspiring. She doesn't even know. So she just left and then she traveled with uh, her new companions uh, to many adventures. She became more uh, famous and powerful along the way. (laughs) And uh, yeah, she learned a thing or two. I wanted to ask, because you talked about your sister, um, what are the events, any other events from her childhood that had the biggest impact on the development of Lovet as a bard, but also as an adventurer? And how did the relationship between her and her sister, because you said that Mm -hmm. the father took her away, right? Yeah, yeah. Shaped her as a person. Mm -hmm. So there are a few events that uh, were pretty important to Lovett's character development. The first one was the abandonment of her father and sister. She felt like her father didn't choose her and she grew up kind of loving but also hating and being competitive against her sister even though she never met her she was like you know why her and not me am Mm -hmm. i not that important am i not gifted am i not uh, good enough so yeah that was the first one it took her to a dark place actually and uh the second one was the uh, when this lord enslaved uh, Gridania. And I think that even though it's a bad event, yeah, I know, it kind of pushed her to find herself and chase her dreams, even with the wrong way, because she wanted to be um, approved by her people and her family and be loved like Siona. <laughs> So this was the second event. And the third event, which was also very important to her, was when she met these adventures. Firstly, these three adventures. And later on, uh, she fell in love. And um, she kind of... We need the romance. We need the romance in our (laughs) life. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, She fell in love and she changed. Uh, I say it as a fateful event because this man really did change her. He helped her seeing uh, stuff that she couldn't till then. And um, the final event was when she finally learned that her father isn't her real father. So she felt broken. She felt without identity. And when she learned about this, maybe the Lord... Um, knew about her improvement and uh, he banished her to another plane of existence. And that's where she found Siona. <laughs> so they searched for the same things, I guess. In a way. In a way, yeah. In their own unique way. I also wanted to ask, because obviously playing in a completely homebrew universe mm-hmm. can be so challenging um but the possibilities are always endless mm-hmm. how did um the historical events of this homebrew town that she grew up helped her to make the difficult decisions that she had to make 
and how her decisions affected the the universe so for that i have to thank my dm because he was great and uh, whatever we did we felt like it had some impact to the world whatever we did whatever we said whatever we could see would maybe five sessions later 10 sessions later but it was there something that we did 10 uh, prior 10 uh, sessions bang it just it would just come to us and that was very great uh, and i love homebrew campaigns they are very inspirational and to see a, a dm creating this thread and this story and trying to you know search uh, all the world he or she had thought it is amazing but mostly i think the decisions were always made with her party together and you know the, the positive thing was that they were all equally they had the same alignment so mm -hmm. it was easy <laughs> um Maybe what was the alignment? Uh, they were good. They were trying okay. to be good, actually. <laughs> they were trying. Uh, maybe some of them weren't that good. But in the end, they were following the good ones because they were the minority. Sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was a good party. And we made some decisions. I don't know if it. some of them were good. Some of them were bad. I don't know. Maybe we'll never know. But yes. Yeah. So I also wanted to ask um, a more like a deeper meaning kind of question like you did. <gasps> I'm scared. Um, do you believe that Lovette maybe has like an imposter syndrome because she decided to become the hero instead of just trying to find one? Was there maybe, since you talked about the relationship with your dad and your sister, um, was there maybe an undying need in her to prove herself to everyone that is actually good enough? Oof, that's deep indeed. <laughs> so, yeah, actually, Lovette's decision to become a hero in the absence of one uh, could stem from a deep-seated desire to prove her worth, firstly to her dad and sister, later to Gritania, and later on to the rest of the people in the world. So the absence of traditional heroes might have triggered feelings of uh, inadequacy, leading to what psychologists often refer to as a imposter syndrome. And the psychological pattern involves doubting one's abilities and fearing being exposed as a fraud, despite evidence of comp competence or success. And she was successful, and she was charming indeed. You'll see her in the skits. She is very charming. She's very happy always. She's very kind. She's very cool. She seems to be, but she feels very depressed most of the time. But she never shows it because she's like, no one will ever love someone who's depressed, who's like me. And that's the real me. But that's not true because depression is not who you really are. You can be charming, you are charming, and you can be funny, and you can be all those wonderful things, and you can be depressed. It's just a part of you, but not a part that defines you. And still, she's trying to figure this out because she fears of rejection. If people know about her darkness, they may would have cast her away. And that didn't happen with her companions when she showed them her dark side they stayed and they embraced her and they loved her for who she was my and... heart and my soul <laughs> yeah <laughs> so she's trying to get over this i i mean she hasn't completely uh got rid of all these negative feelings she still has all of them but a life goes on she keeps going she keeps meeting new people people who inspire her, and now she met Siona, and she thinks she's cool, awkward, but cool. <laughs> In a way. In a way. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And yeah, she tries her best to be, you know, to have another day. Just, I just, I want to have another day in this world. (laughs) Well, they're actually now in candle keep and they're trying to find a way Mm -hmm. to resolve this. Yep. Find things about dynamancy. Yeah. And turning about time or going back in time or all anything about time, basically. And we will also, we will not only be us, sometimes we will see guests, other characters. Mm hmm. Maybe from the past, maybe future characters, new characters, uh, maybe characters from uh, Siona and Lovett's backstories, or not. I don't know. I'm excited about this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be great. So yeah, we thought you know we, we we were looking for an intro, a good intro to our podcast, and a friend of ours, a beloved friend, <laughs> and a rural lawyer. <laughs> so he told us, why don't you do something different every time to be more uh, interactive? And we were like, you know, that's a very cool idea. So we thought about these kids and we love role playing and uh, we love these characters and it is fun to voice act. So we were like, scary. here it is. Take it. <laughs> it's really scary for me. And we're not actually... Yeah professional um podcasters or whatever that is but we are so passionate about this um and I think you're gonna see it and realize it and just in case there's someone who wants to complain about the inaccuracies of the D&D rules mm-hmm. and the lore that is mentioned in this podcast <clears throat> yeah we're going to stop you right there because obviously <laughs> for us it's more of like a rule of cool kind of vibe here. Um, some of the things are going to be homebrew and definitely inaccurate in many ways and shapes and forms. But please bear with us and just try and enjoy the story the same way that we enjoy it too. Or what it is, just what it is. Because, exactly. you know, as we've said before, as we mentioned, we come from campaigns uh, these two characters come from campaigns that uh, were homebrewed so yeah unfortunately unfortunately uh, you're gonna see many of these things but you the ones who love a good story and a funny story and role playing and role playing and romance (laughs) exactly you're going to love it and misery (laughs) especially misery (laughs) it's gonna be miserable in some episodes but in a good way but in a good way yeah because Mm -hmm. we fight it and we live another day of course take an inspiration Val I give it to you (laughs) okay so this was our first episode I hope we didn't bore you much I really hope so yeah but we are uh you know this kind of players who write a book for a single <laughs> backstory. And yep. many of our friends uh, are mocking us because they're like, you know, you don't, you can be just a kid, 16 years old, and have all this background and all this. No, stop. No, just let me write for that. Let God's me write. Sake. Just... I just want to write. <laughs> <laughs> I have mental health issues. I need to yeah, write. I need to write for my mental health. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's magic. Everything is. is possible. So we're going to leave you here. Val, do you have anything to add? Maybe, I don't know. Just be nice, people. That's all I need to say, <laughs> I think, because I'm I'm sensitive. <laughs> I don't have bar, bark skin yet. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Happy to have you. Um, And what else? I think that's all I want to say. Thank you so much for everything. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate you staying here. And we'll see you on the next episode. See you. Bye. Bye.